Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you in all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
A reading from the letter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold wings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there, or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you not, do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother and sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought, him, they brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand upon him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, 
and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephpatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered him to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was so excited to be able to teach on this gospel passage. In fact, I told Father Judd this week, if I could write an icon, if I had that ability, or even if I could commission an icon to be written, this would be the story that I would choose to have written. Because to me, This gospel passage is the epitome of the word gospel if we consider gospel to mean good news. This passage exemplifies what Jesus meant when he began his ministry by standing up in the synagogue. Remember way back at the beginning of his ministry, he stood up in the synagogue and he quoted Isaiah saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is what Jesus' Jesus' mission is all about, and this is what happens in this gospel passage. But now we have to put this gospel passage in context because the evangelist, Mark, has clear purpose in his just juxtaposition of this week's reading with last week's. They form one chapter. Last week, I'll refresh your memory, we read about the Pharisees and how they were criticizing Jesus' disciples for not washing their hands. And Jesus rebuked them. And he pointed out that they were putting human tradition and human beliefs above the ways of a loving God. He said, you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. God commands us to love one another. And they were instead criticizing one another. Jesus teaches them that it's not human traditions that are important, but it's God's expansive love that counts for more. See, they had it backwards. The traditions and the commandments are there to serve and clarify love. It's not the other way around that love is supposed to be confined within our human ideas and traditions. We have to expand our way of thinking to be closer to God. The Pharisees were being closed-minded, and Jesus criticizes that. And then, in Mark's Gospel, the very next story he tells Jesus sends out, sets out for Gentile territory, that is, non-Jewish territory. Jesus taught us first with words the concept about the expansive nature of God's love, and now he goes to show us what it means in action. He gets out of his comfort zone, and he goes to find out experientially the boundaries of God's love and God's care and God's mission. He goes to Gentile territory. And in going there, he goes to a people 
who his people believed were separated to God, from God to some extent. You see, the Jews, he believed, were the chosen people. And the other people are not the chosen people. They're a little bit set off. They're kind of second class. And now this is important to Mark to show that Jesus goes to them because in early Christianity, in the time that Mark's writing, people were still were, were arguing about whether the Gentiles should be included in that new way of love that would eventually become called Christianity. And so Mark is applying Jesus' action to his own time to show people, hey, he went to others. Can we do no less? True to his word at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus has been bringing love and wholeness to all the people who are most desperate for love and wholeness. And of course, this makes him very popular with the people who have been cut off or alienated from having what they needed to make them whole. So even when he tries to hide or lay low for a while, people find him. The Syrophoenician woman found him. And her daughter had an unclean spirit. And so she goes to Jesus. Now, this woman had three strikes against her. One, she's a woman. Women did not have much standing in those days. And women had no voice, no power to speak in public. Two, she's a Gentile. She's part of that non-Jewish, not chosen race. And three, her daughter had an unclean spirit, which to some extent taints her too. Yet, Jesus talks to her. Now, in our hearing today, we hear Jesus' words as harsh. I mean, he calls her people dogs, her and her people. But he doesn't cut her off. He recognized her as a person in need and a person who is filled with love for her daughter. And he has the compassion and the open-mindedness to engage in conversation with her. He gives her the opportunity to speak to him. Yes, he gives the opportunity for a woman to speak to the man. And in Matthew's version of the story, this is made more dramatic because in Matthew's version, the disciples are protesting and they tell him, what, send her away. What are you doing even talking to her? But he opens a dialogue. Last week, we read the passage where Jesus challenged the Pharisees' close-mindedness. They were making a God of their own thought tradition rather than being open to the greater call of love. So now Jesus shows us what love looks like in practice. He enters into open dialogue, open-minded dialogue with this woman. He begins by telling her where he stands, and he's open to hearing her response. He tells her, hey, from what I've been told, our people are the children and your pe who, who get fed, and your people are the dogs. W what do you think about that? Where are you in this? He's open to being schooled by a woman, a Gentile, someone unclean. Everyone deserves a voice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We can be taught by anyone. If Jesus is open to being taught by a woman, then how much more must we be listening, listen to one another? We can learn from anyone we encounter. Sick people, homeless people, poor people, disabled people, minority people, LGBTQ plus people, they all have something to teach us. In fact, they're our best teachers. Because those people who have been alienated or left out in any way are able to show us 
what we simply don't see because we don't have new eyes anymore. They move us out of our own comfort zone into new understanding. Just as Jesus moved out of Jewish territory into Gentile territory, we must move out of our own group think and challenge our own understandings. Now, if today's reading stopped right there, I would think this is still plenty of good news. But the passage doesn't stop there. The abundance of this passage goes on because it turns out that this woman is very wise. She uses Jesus' analogy of the children and the dogs and turns it on his head. Yes, food is for the children, but in the abundance of God, everyone benefits. We all sink or swim together. Barriers disappear. She points out to Jesus, if you are who you say you are, love will flow endlessly without bounds. If you, in fact, are the son and embodiment of love itself, then you must recognize me as created by that same creator and participating in the same life that you have. If love is as abundant as you claim it is, then there can be no bounds on that love. It's for everyone, even me and my little daughter. And Jesus recognizes the truth of her teaching. He sees that she, more than most, truly does understand what he's been preaching and what he's been saying and what he's been trying to get across to his own people. And since she and Jesus can now see each other, no longer as alienated person and person who's chosen, but both participating in the same spirit, because she's united in heart with Jesus, her daughter is healed. Miracles happen. And Mark wants the people of his time to participate in that same spirit, where there are not boundaries, but a free flow of love and life. They must accept Gentiles as Jesus did. They must accept women as Jesus did. And the gospel still doesn't end there. It goes on. Jesus moves even farther around into Gentile territory. The route makes it circuitous. He goes all the way to the region of the Decapolis, where they bring to him a man who is deaf and mute. And Jesus takes him away from cra the crowd. He's done this before in Mark, where he, has, he removes, it separates from the crowd to focus on what's really important. In fact, he actually literally puts his fingers into the man's ears, blocking out any noise, symbolically blocking out any noise or distractions of voices or stories from the crowd. Let me block your ears. Don't listen to that voice that says that you are not worthy of love. Let me block your ears. Don't listen to those voices who think that the deafness is somehow your fault because you sinned. Let me block your ears against anything that would tell you that you are any less than anyone else. And then Jesus gets, spits on his hand and puts his hand on the tongue of the man, symbolically uniting Jesus and the man. I don't know about you, when I was a kid, especially boys that happened to me, would, do, would uh, spit on their hands and then shake hands and become blood brothers somehow. That was uniting. I didn't do that, but I've seen people do that. <laughs> This is symbolically what Jesus was doing. He was uniting himself to the man. 
and then looking up to heaven, which is totally open to Jesus. We know that from his baptism. He looks up to heaven that is open to prayer and oneness and wholeness, and he says, be opened. And this man, who had been alienated, who had been closed off from receiving, was able to receive. He became one with Jesus, and in so doing, Jesus' openness and wholeness reached this man's heart and healed him. And it healed him so completely that it also cured him. It opened his ears and his tongue that he can receive the good word and he can speak the good word in his heart. That boundless love flowed into him and healed him through and through. The man is now whole, no longer alienated, able to hear and have a voice in this world. And thus Mark reinforces the importance of setting love free from human bounds and preconceptions and groupthink. And then Mark closes with, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. He echoes once again Isaiah, part of which we read this morning and in other places. Isaiah's promises about the kingdom of God coming, and Isaiah tells us what it's going to look like. The blind will see, the lame will walk, the deaf will hear. This is the good news of the kingdom of God. Those who have been silenced now have a voice. Those who have been held captive or alienated now take their place in society as equals. Because there's a place, not a literal place, but a place of God's will, a place of God's reign, where God's freedom reigns not human tradition and limiting ideas. There's a place where everyone will be allowed to speak out loud the spirit implanted in their hearts, where abundance is allowed to multiply without boundaries. There's a place where there are not outsiders and insiders, but only the beloved. Jesus came to join hearts with each one of us and whisper, Ephpatha, be open, so that that place, God's place, lives in our hearts as well. May it be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord.
In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Melissa, our bishop provisional, Phil, our bishop elect, and for all bishops and other ministers. So God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for the Church of the Province of Myanmar, for Sean, the presiding bishop elect, for the African descent ministries of the Episcopal Church and the Diocese of Arkansas and Dallas. For the Annie Wright School in Tacoma, for the Charles Wright Academy in Tacoma, for the Table, the University of Washington Episcopal Campus Ministry, for the Church of the Redeemer, for Jed and Teresa, our priests, the vestry serving this parish, and our members of this congregation, for this nation and all in authority, for Joseph, Kamala, Jay, Terry, and Cecile. For the welfare of the world, especially our victims of the conflicts in Ukraine, Sudan, Palestine, Israel, and Haiti. For those affected by earthquake, fire, flood, and mass shootings. For hoping to can more place, and all those without adequate housing in our community. For all those who need healing, especially Ginny, Fitz, Kathy, June and Dick, Richard, Judy, Barry, Mike, Shireen, Scott, Sharon, Sandy, John and Terry, Elizabeth, Hannah, Andy, Michael, Cleo and Daniel, Alan, Mike, Mel, Jessica, and Becky. For those in the armed forces and their families, especially Cully, Bede, and Willie, and for our enemies. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for those celebrating the anniversary of their birth, especially Caleb. For those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, for those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage. We will exalt you, O God our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of sins. Have mercy on us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And it's so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Welcome all, we're glad you're here with us this morning, however you're joining us, whether it's in person or on our video stream, it's wonderful to have you worshiping with us this morning. Just a few announcements before we continue. Uh, a reminder that this evening at six o'clock is the uh, performance by the winners of the Francis Welton competition by uh, Duo Duro. Uh, so this is a, a free concert tonight here at the church at 6 o'clock in this space. Uh, all are welcome to attend. Uh, we hope that you'll come and listen to this uh, wonderful music put on by the Ladies Musical Club of Seattle. Uh, a reminder that the ordination and consecration of the Reverend Dr. Philip Bell is this coming Saturday. Uh, if you're planning to attend and you would like to carpool because it's in Bellevue, and there's almost no parking in Bellevue. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex, the entryway just out there on the table. Uh, you can sign up uh, to meet here on Saturday morning to uh, carpool in an efficient way to Bellevue for the ordination and consecration. Uh, next Sunday is Holy Cross Day. Uh, Holy Cross Day has been, uh, has been the traditional a sort of big beginning of the program year uh, and patronal feast day here, and we're going to keep that tradition going. There will be a potluck brunch at 9 o'clock next Saturday. Uh, you know, bring something tasty that you like to breakfast and for breakfast and bring a little bit extra to share with people. And uh, we'll be downstairs at 9 o'clock and uh, to share food and uh, time together on the Feast of the Holy Cross. Uh, there's a parish barbecue also, because this is Church of the Redeemer and we like to eat together. A parish uh, barbecue on September 29th. The barbecue uh, will be at Cedar Grove Park in Bothell. Uh, the address is in your bulletin, uh, and Google knows where it is, so it can take you to where you need to go. Uh, but after this, after this service, on the 29th of September. Uh, adult and children's education are coming. Uh, we'll begin adult and children's education October 6th at 9.30 a.m. Uh, open office hours uh, and Wednesday Bible study and Wednesday Eucharist happen as usual. You can find out the uh, times and places for all of those in your bulletin as well as, as well as other announcements in your bulletin and in our online e-newsletter, The Font. Uh, if you're not signed up for The Font, you can do that on our website, uh, which you can find in your bulletin or if you're watching us on the live stream, you've already found. Uh, I hope that you will look at all of those announcements, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, and that we will see you back here very soon. Now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Sustainer of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. As your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of Mary his mother, to fulfill your law, to open to us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining you in the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those of every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, most gracious God, we who have been redeemed by Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, God of our kindred and our generation, God of Abraham, Isaac, and J Jacob, Deborah, Hannah, and Rebekah, God and Father of our Savior, Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let this grace of this Holy Communion make us one body and one spirit in Christ, that we may worldly serve the world in your Son's name. <coughs> Accept these prayers and praises, O God, most merciful, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
of God for the people of God. Behold what you are. Become what you receive.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.